what you're seeing is an otherwise unassuming intersection in East Jerusalem. Like any major city, it's a drumbeat of diesel engines, motorcycles, sirens, and car horns mixing into a constant muddled background of noise. I'm also looking down at the general area of the third wall of Jerusalem during the Second Temple period. You can see it in old photographs of this building, and in fact, this right here is probably a remnant of it sticking out from underneath the modern pavement. Turn back the clock from this same vantage point, what would we have seen? What would we have heard? Before the invention of gunpowder, the loudest noises a human might have ever experienced on an average day would have maybe been thunder or perhaps a volcanic eruption if you're unlucky enough, but on your average day, nothing would have come close to this busy intersection. You might have heard a human shouting, only 75 decibels from three feet away. Or perhaps a dog barking nearby, 70 decibels at 50 feet. But the din of traffic at 80 decibels, motorcycles at full throttle, 95 decibels, these would never have entered into the urban soundscape. The clink of a blacksmith's hammer, the clopping hooves of a donkey, or the creak of a wagon would have all been audible. Small sounds that today, noise pollution washes out. The embodied experience of ancient soundscapes would be utterly foreign to us, who have only experienced post-industrial landscapes. We like to think that we have it all here in the 21st century. In Massachusetts, where I'm going to school, we've cut infant mortality to 4.3 deaths per 1,000 births. In the ancient Roman Empire, some estimate this would have been as high as 400 deaths per 1,000 births. We've eradicated smallpox. We've been to space. And we have Super Mario Brothers. But what have we lost? One third of humanity can no longer see the Milky Way at night because of light pollution. We have driven most of Earth's megafauna into extinction. And over half of us don't experience on a daily basis the muted soundscape of an ancient city. Now, would I trade my immunity from smallpox for the chance at experiencing the Milky Way, woolly mammoths, and really quiet cities? No, probably not. But it does remind me what the author L.P. Hartley famously said, the past is a foreign country. They do things differently there. And I'd add to this, the past is a foreign country, they experience things differently. Our connection to these millions of humans, how they were born, lived, and died in obscurity is tenuous. Lost after thousands of years and barely imaginable from the scattered cultural remains buried beneath our feet today.